Christmas in southern Germany. Visiting God at home. I've lived in Germany for almost 30 years. I even have a German passport. But if you ask me to describe a typical German Christmas, I'd be hard-pressed to answer. Germany has so many aspects. Friends told me, go to Bamberg. There's nowhere more traditional. I discover nativity scenes are a vital part of that tradition. People here like to stage the Christmas story at home with miniature figures. How Mary gave birth to her child Jesus in a manger in Bethlehem because there was no room for them at the inn. At the Christmas market, you can buy all the accessories you need. But there's also a nativity route in Bamberg, a kind of tour on which you can view more than 400 public nativity scenes. Where's the starting point? I assume this fellow must know, but he seems preoccupied. Bamberg's nativity scene tradition began almost 400 years ago in St. Martin's Church. This is where the Jesuits staged the Christmas story with figures for the first time. And just as I arrive, a flame from the Nativity Grotto in Bethlehem, the site of the very first Christmas, is being carried into the church in solemn procession. The young people light the candle on the altar from the Bethlehem flame. Sadly, the original nativity scene went missing when the Jesuit order in Germany was dissolved in the 18th century. But there are still enough enthusiasts here to continue the tradition, like Martin Schroeder. I always imagined a Christmas nativity had to include Jesus in the manger, but here the Holy Family is noticeably absent. Martin Schroeder explains that the tradition in southern Germany is to stage the individual scenes of the story leading up to Christmas separately. It seems that when I arrive in Bamberg, Mary and Joseph are just arriving in Bethlehem. The rooms are all occupied. Mary and Joseph are turned away. The Holy Family is tucked away, almost hidden in a corner of this scene. And that's deliberate. The birth of Jesus occurs unnoticed. I didn't know that in southern Germany the Christmas story is presented in stages. That's why I didn't see the Christ child. He's only born on Christmas Eve. Frankly, I'm a bit disappointed. But I'm not giving up yet. I thread my way through the town, traipsing uphill and down dale. Bamberg was built on seven hills. <laughs> This nativity route certainly keeps you fit. Bamberg has a specialist school where enthusiasts from all over Germany take courses in constructing nativity scenes. The best results are then exhibited here as part of the Bamberg nativity route. And just look at that. There's also a beautiful 19th century Christ child on display. Hildegard Wiedstrom is the chief instructor. She designs a new nativity scene for herself almost every year. This time, she set the birth of Christ in an alpine hut. Her work is impressive. And I'm not surprised when she tells me that she sold a number of her nativity scenes abroad. One of several shops in Bamberg that specialize in nativity scene figures and accessories placed a few of her smaller scenes in the window. She tells me with obvious pride that they were bought by an Australian businessman. The quality label Made in Germany seems to apply even to nativity scenes. Over the years, Hildegard Wittstum has experimented with various settings but admits that alpine landscapes are her favorite. 
Others prefer an exotic touch. It appears that Lapland is not just the home of Santa Claus, but also where Christ was born. A local lass fills me in on the southern German flora and fauna. Just across the street is the Carmelite Monastery, the next stage on my nativity route. Here, Father Gerhard explains the strange mixture of styles, figures in traditional southern German costumes set in a Levantine landscape. These nativity scenes, he says, are intended to convey the biblical message in its historical context of Jesus' birth 2,000 years ago in Israel. On the other hand, that message is still relevant to the everyday world we live in. The message, he says, is not addressed to just anyone, but very specifically to us. So the Christmas message comes to us, and as we happen to be walking down a particular street, it comes upon us at a busy intersection. Wollen wir nicht mal reingehen und ein bisschen näher angucken? Wollt ihr? The father tells me that the figure of the Christ child, half a meter in length no less, was stolen one year. Apparently, several months later, the unknown thief placed the figure in a plastic bath and let it float down the river. It was rescued before being crushed in the vortex of the upper mills. A miracle! At the Christmas market, a young man strikes up a conversation with me. Stefan Strauch insists on showing me the nativity scene he has constructed at home. In this room? Yeah. Ach du meine Güte, das glaube ich nicht. <laughs> In the smallest room of the flat, he proudly displays the biggest home nativity scene you could imagine. I'm struck by the loving attention to detail. And especially the precise construction of the roofs. He tells me that he and his father made the buildings. Clothing the figures and furnishing the interiors, he says, was his mother's job. High up on the hill called Michaelsberg, in the Benedictine Abbey, there's another nativity scene awaiting me. I'm not sure what to expect from this final stop on my nativity route. <laughs> And here's something that I found really quite extraordinary, a so-called interactive nativity scene, where the visitors themselves can play the parts of the Holy Family. Bamberg is full of architectural treasures. On this journey, however, I've discovered that Bamberg is much more than just historical buildings. Again and again, I get the feeling that the world is still intact here. <laughs>